Good morning. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, welcome to each and every one of you. You may be seated. So just about everybody's sick, and um, it's that time of year, I guess, and I'm hoping that we can keep each other safe. So we just want to remind you that if you do have uh, symptoms um, that are severe enough to make you sick, that we stay home and watch online and take part in worship that way, uh, or wear a mask, we give thanks for that. A few announcements before we begin. This is a note from the Property and Finance Committee. As we are starting the conversion from oil to gas, heating tomorrow morning, the furnace will be turned off for the next few days. If you're attending a meeting on Monday or Tuesday, of which there are several, we encourage you to dress a little warmer than usual. Also, I want to thank everybody for helping with the indoor yard sale yesterday. It was incredible. Um, Brenda and I were commenting about, you know, the miracle of, of putting a call out for people to donate items to these things. And if you, you know, you build it, they will come. And it's incredible the amount of stuff that people have. We have no clue where it comes from. You can only downsize so much. but. We're always grateful to receive it, and it was a, a, a good day, and money was raised, and we also had uh, some chances to, to meet each other and have a few laughs as well. So thank you to everybody who helped out with that. I was talking to Phyllis before the service, and uh, if you want to go and take a look around in the basement, uh, all the tables are still set up, and uh, we'd ask that you um, take whatever you'd like uh, to help with uh, the cleaning up on Monday of that. There is the homemade baked beans and brown beds bread sale. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, take uh, in your in your bulletin. So uh, place your orders as soon as you can. And also, I want to note that while we are live on Facebook this morning, Facebook seems to have changed its rules so that you need to have a Facebook account to watch the service. So we've also decided that. Uh, Kimberly will be posting the, the video of the worship service on YouTube later in the day. So if that's something that's easier for people in your life, please let them know that we'll be also on YouTube and we have sent out messages to the congregation. On Sunday, October 29th is All Saints Sunday and we're inviting people to share names of those who have passed away in the past year in, in your life. If you'd like to have their names said out loud in church that Sunday, during our All Saints service, we would appreciate you submitting the name to Karen at the office. And as well, we're asking the kids who will be present that day to wear their Halloween costume for a little party upstairs in the Sunday school. On November the 4th, we'll be having the Christmas Bazaar and Luncheon, and that's always a big, big event here at the church. Take note of the details there. And finally, for our anniversary Sunday, November 26th, we will be transferring members and welcoming people who are, want to be uh, members of the church. So if you'd like to join the church or transfer your membership here, that's always a great opportunity on that Sunday to do that. I know uh, Bruce has an announcement. Good morning. I'm Bruce McLeod, if you uh, don't already know me. Uh, along with Gordon Hicks, I'm a member of the Hutton Loose on Lions Club, but I also sit on the board of directors of the Lions Sick Children's Fund. Uh, in conversation with Aaron, he asked me to come up and explain a little bit about what it is and what we do. And what we do, it's for children that need help getting uh, medical care, IWK, Toronto or Montreal, Children's Hospital, and the, also their families that want to go along with them. So we, uh, we help pay for transportation, but for the medical issues and uh, somewhat drugs and equipment that they, they require. In the, uh, the infancy of the Lion Sick Children's Fund, it was the Moncton Lion Sick Children's Fund, and in around 2000, they could no longer handle it on their own. Uh, we now have a board of directors, half are lions, half are civilians. And if you'd like to be one, we'd love to have you. 
Uh, we, uh, we started off by covering only Westmoreland, Kent, and Albert counties, and we now cover all of New Brunswick. In doing that since 2001, we have helped four, uh, 1,473 families throughout New Brunswick to the tune of $1.6 million and still have 243 open files on our books at this time. Where do we get the money? Well, the majority of our money comes from the Dragon Boat Festival. And uh, if you've never been to it, you should be. On Fridays, uh, it is the high schools. Last year, we had 11 high schools uh, that participated with 34 boats in it. That's 20 high school students in each boat, along with teachers, advisors, families. So we had about 2,000 there on Friday afternoon. And you have never seen enthusiasm and good wishes and whatnot. There is not a bad word spoken. And they're all singing and chanting their school songs. On Saturdays, we have the corporate boats and we had 24 boats in last year, more are signing up this year. Um, the money itself, 60% that is raised, donated, uh, goes to the Lions Sick Children's Fund, and the other 40% is at the discretion of each boat. They can go to a charity, and last year there were 30 charities that uh, benefited from, from the Dragon Boat Festival. So if you know of anybody that, that has a child that uh, is in need, the family uh, is having trouble handling it, uh, we do have a website, lionsickchildrensfund.inc, and uh, they can go on it and it will direct them to our screening committee that will uh, ask some questions and be able to help them from there. And I'm available at any time anybody has any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. I was fascinated when he was telling me about that after church last Sunday, and I thought all of you should hear about that good work that's being done in New Brunswick for New Brunswickers. Please join me in our call to worship. Let us worship the Holy One who forms us as a people a community, and a world. God knows our name and looks upon us with pleasure. Let us hear, see, and know the ways of the Lord. God reveals God's self to us in magnificent and gentle ways. Let us proclaim the glory, goodness, and graciousness of our great God. God is worthy to be praised. Hymn number 333.
Let us pray. Revealing God, you show us the way of life. Lead us with love and move us to compassion. May our hearts be transformed by your spirit and by your truth. Let our actions and attitudes demonstrate your kingdom. May justice and peace be our hope. Let repair, restoration, and reconciliation be our aim. Make your presence among us known. Let us prepare to receive it. Amen. And we continue in confession. Righteous One, forgive us for all the ways our hearts have been hardened. Forgive us for every time we chose to reflect the ways, attitudes, and values of this world rather than your kingdom. Forgive us for turning away from the brokenness of our world when it becomes too uncomfortable. Forgive us for being timid when you empower us to be bold, for being resigned when you have created us to be resolute, for being complicit when you have charged us to be transformative. Help us to walk in your image and your path of righteousness, courageousness, and loving kindness. Amen. Beloved, remember that you do not walk this journey alone. The comforter and advocate accompanies you and equips you for the ministry of abundant love that shows up, speaks up, and acts up in the name of Jesus. Know that your life and your witness make a difference. God is faithful to forgive and enables us to do the impossible and be the unimaginable. We give thanks for the offering that's been received at the doors and the boxes, and we also give thanks for the offering that's been received online and through the mail. And now we will bless it with song and prayer. pray. Generous God, we thank you for the gifts we receive and for the gifts we give. May they serve to make your kingdom come and your will be done. Magnify their impact so that you may be glorified and your name be praised. Amen. This is a newer hymn that we've done many times here. And it's a beautiful hymn, and I hope that as you sing it, you find yourself in it. And I uh, would encourage you to remain seated, and if you have little ones near you, sing with them and help them to see the words. And it's called, I Have Called You By Your Name, and the words are printed in your program.
any of our kids like to come down, we can have a time together. It's a rainy day. Do you like rainy days? Yes. You do? Okay. So there's a story in the Bible where they, where Jesus tells people to give to God what is God's and give to the government what is the government's. So I was, when I was your age, um, my grandmother gave me this coin. Can you see that? And take a look at it and just pass it along to the person next to you. And you can notice a couple of things about the coin. It looks melted. Yeah. And what else is different about that coin? It's got a hole in it. Yeah. I'll tell you about that in a second. It's kind of heavy, isn't it? It's from the year 1797. So that coin is older than your mums and dads. I was being kind, it didn't go the next level up. So the coin's melted, it was in a fire, and the coin has a hole in it because when people used to have that coin, it's called a cartwheel coin, it's a a British two-pence cartwheel. And it has a hole in it because they used to carry it around their neck, they put a string around their neck and that's how they would... Maybe people didn't have pockets back then, I have no idea. But I do know when I researched it uh, this morning that that coin if it was not burnt, and if it didn't have a hole in it, um, it would be worth $600. <clears throat> so, worth more than a penny. And, on the front of it, you can't tell, but it's King George III. I never heard of him very much, but... So, if his picture's on the coin, who owns the coin? The king. King George's coin. This is his. And then we give it back to him, right? But what belongs to God? Wow, that's a better question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Pretty much everything. Pretty much everything else, yeah. Except stuff that was man-made. Yeah. Except stuff that Albert Einstein, Einstein, or Murray Curie. Okay. So whatever Albert Einstein invented is his, yeah? And whatever Elvis Presley invented is his, yeah. Elvis might say, though, that God, God gave him some songs. But anyway, so the world around us belongs to God, and we belong to God, and love belongs to God, and all of the caring things we do belong to God, and all of that. So next time you look around, you think this is God's world. And it's not the world that, that governments make, where there's war, and where there's bad things, and people are, need food and medicine. That's, that's not the world that we want to live in. We want to live in the, the world that God wants us to live in, which is one where people are cared for and where people are loved. So I hope that you can remember that we, there's certain things we have to, that, that yeah, we got to, like money and things like that, we have to give back to the government, but the other things like love, we can give back to God and to each other. Let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for loving us, for loving this world, and teaching us to love it too. Amen. Good morning. Do you not just enjoy children's time with Aaron, who opens it up and goes and rolls with it? (laughs) Well done. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 to 23, Moses' intercession. 
Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked for. You have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will pro proclaim before your name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, See, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, and while my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Today's psalm reading is Psalm 99. It is in page 819 of Voices United. However, you will find that it is also printed in your bulletin this morning. And the title of it is, "You Rule with Just," or God is a Ruler Who Delights in Justice. God and the peoples tremble. You sit enthroned upon the cherubim, and the earth is quaking. You, O oh God, are great in Zion. You are exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy are you and mighty, a ruler who delights in justice. You have determined what is fair. You have done in Jacob what is just and right. Moses and Aaron were among your priests, Miriam among those who called on your name. They called to you, God, and you answered. In the pillar of cloud, you spoke to them. They kept your teachings and the law that you gave them. O oh God, our God, you answered them. To them you were forgiving God, though you punished their offenses. Proclaim the greatness of God and worship on God's holy hill. For God, our God, is the Holy One. Thanks for that, Cy. I, I'll take a compliment from a high school principal any day. This is a reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. 
The Pharisees went off and made a plan to trap Jesus with questions. Then they sent to him some of their disciples and some members of Herod's party. Teacher, they said, we know that you tell the truth. You teach the truth about God's will for people without worrying about what people think because you pay no attention to a person's status. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it against our law to pay taxes to the Roman emperor or not? Jesus, however, was aware of their plan, and so he said, You hypocrites, why are you always trying to trap me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. They brought him the coin, and he asked them, Whose face and name are these? The emperor's, they answered. So Jesus said to them, Well, pay to the emperor what belongs to the emperor, and pay to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is printed in the program, Deep in Our Hearts. Let us pray. O Spirit, we pray that you soothe our minds, that you care for our weary souls, that you lift our heavy hearts, and that we put our trust in something other than ourselves in this world, whether it's other people, whether it's you. We feel surrounded by your spirit today as we gather in love and in the name of peace. We give thanks for this gathering. 
And we give thanks for those who are worshiping online, for those who are singing in the choir and making music, and for the children present here today. May we be ever mindful that there are places in our world where such a gathering is not permitted. So we pray today for the end of violence. Amen. On Friday night, because it was unseasonably warm, times like that I try not to pretend there's a global crisis around us when it comes to the environment, I sat outside for a while with our dog and listened to the live service broadcast from Central Synagogue in New York City. My friend, author and artist Meredith Gould, shared their service once a few years ago and I've been hooked ever since, mostly because of the music at first, but it's also for the message too, for the Friday night Shabbat service, that's what it's called. Rabbi Angela Buchdahl says that Shabbat is the intentional practice and the religious and spiritual imperative of taking one day of the week to seek out beauty, awe, connection, joy, calm, and more importantly, she says, it's 24 hours of not looking at your phone. Not sure many of us can do that. It's the concept of being sanctuary for each other. And when we don't feel sanctuary where we think we should, whether it's in our work or in our relationships, we need to create it within ourselves. She says that Shabbat is pretty clear on how to do that. Be off your phone for 24 hours. The bad news will still be there Saturday night. Rabbi Angela also said how important it, us, how important it is for us to find fellow travelers. You can argue with people all week long, but for one day, surround yourself with people with whom you can just be and be yourself. And finally, she said, Shabbat is the opportunity in which you can bring the light. And if you can't feel the light, then kindle the light. Sing together. Greet each other. Bring the light together. So as I was, as I was sitting outside listening to this beautiful service on that beautiful month in the evening, I listened as Rabbi Angela thanked everyone who made the service happen. The other rabbis, the cantor, the president of the synagogue, the audiovisual team. And then I sat up when she said that she was really really thankful for their incredible security team. A year or two ago, I brought over a menorah I had to the Tiferes Israel Synagogue here in Moncton because I thought they should have it, not me. And I was given a tour of the synagogue, and I looked at a wall, and I said, what's all that? And I was told that they've had to increase security measures in recent years. According to the Anglican Journal, the leaders of Canada's Anglican and Lutheran churches have written an open letter to the Prime Minister calling for Canada to champion humanitarian aid to Gaza following an explosion at an Anglican-run hospital there October 17th, which killed as many as 500 people. According to ABC News, Israel began its bombing campaign after Hamas military surgeons, militants surged across the border October 7th and killed over 1,400 people, mostly civilians, and abducted more than 200 others. Israel's offensive has devastated neighborhoods, shuttered five hospitals, killed thousands, and wounded more than its remaining health facilities can handle. We have a shortage of everything, and we're dealing with very complex surgeries Dr. Abed, who works with Doctors Without Borders, told the Associated Press from the hospital. The medical center is still treating hundreds of patients in defiance of an evacuation order from the, the Israeli military gave on Friday. These people are all terrified, and so am I, the surgeon said, but there's no way we'll evacuate. The only thing worse than the screams of a patient undergoing surgery without enough anesthesia are the terror-stricken faces of those awaiting their turn, a 51-year-old orthopedic surgeon said. Archbishop Linda Nichols, primate of the Anglican Church of Canada, and National Bishop Susan Johnson of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, highlighted the hospital's history of cancer care and care for traumatized children in the region. They urged Canada to call for an immediate cessation of hostilities in the region and a humanitarian corridor to bring food, water, and medical aid into Gaza. 
Canada must use all of its means at its disposal to advocate for the respect of international law and the protection of human rights as it has done in the past. The time to speak is now, they wrote in their letter. Four days ago, a Palestinian man posted on Facebook, there is some hope, that's what the doctor told me about my child. I left and came back but couldn't find my child, the doctor, or even the hospital. Just yesterday, according to CNN, the president of a Detroit, Detroit synagogue board was found dead with multiple stab wounds outside of her home. We don't know the answers, but more violence is not the answer. We don't respond to the killing of babies by killing more babies. As I sat with the scripture this week, I scanned it. I thought, what do these words say to us now in a world like this? I needed my eyes to find something that led me to hope. I read the scripture, I read the scripture before I dive deep on them, and maybe that's just what I needed to do most, was just to read it, to abide and pray. And as I read Psalm 99, my eyes kept being drawn back to a refrain in the psalm. And when you read it, you see the statement three times, He is holy. And though the third time's a bit different, but the intent is the same, God is holy. It reminded me of old Scottish songs or maritime sea shanties where we all join in on the refrain. So if I said, oh, the year was 1778. You got it. So that's the refrain in the song. He is holy. How I wish I wasn't Sherbrooke now. Bet you most of you didn't realize, like me, that Stan Rogers' Bears Privateers isn't historically accurate at all but it was his way of writing an anti-war song. It's a post-Vietnam War era song in the style of a sea shanty. Now, there's nothing I can do here today or say that can contain God. I can't make the scripture seem less intense by explaining it away with what it really means in the original translation. The word of God is the word of God. And despite my best efforts to be folksy and familiar, this book is asking something great of all of us, that we worship God, that we love kindness, and that we walk humbly across this earth. Scripture scholar Bobby Morris says, to call, to call God holy is to acknowledge that God is radically different than anything else in our lives or our universe that we can imagine. That holiness on our part has little, if anything, to do with our personal piety or our religious practices. Instead, it means to be different because God is different. That's what holy is. It's set apart. And because, be different because God is different. Just as God chooses not to operate according to the norms of other gods, so we also belong to a God who marches to the beat of a different drum, following paths that are not of those of least resistance or operating according to principles of war and personal wants and pleasures, but for the most part to love God and to be like God. So what is God? What do we return to God? Do we return violence for violence? Maybe in today's world it means praying for peace. Peace in Israel, peace in Gaza. Perhaps worship is not listening to political talking points, but actually caring for your neighbor and the ways your neighbor needs to be cared for. I listen to politicians and my head almost spins off. It was interesting to me last week to tune into the live broadcast of the New Brunswick Legislature as I was a bit shocked and a little bit horrified that they opened their deliberations with prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Now normally you would think that one like me would be delighted by that fact, but I wasn't and here's why. First, it gives the impression that God has sanctioned whatever decisions that have come that they all, all have come to with regard to New Brunswickers. Well, that's obviously not true, as the interests of political parties often don't align themselves with the interests of ordinary people in our province. They do, however, align themselves quite nicely with big business. The Premier said it himself this week, he could alleviate the burdens of inflation on New Brunswick, but he won't because he might need to use that during a campaign. It's a veiled threat, so there you go. And also, while we're at it, why don't we just blame Justin Trudeau for about everything that's wrong in Canada and in the world? That'll preach. But let me be frank. God is pretty clear in scriptures that politicians don't seem to be the bearers of good news. That role falls upon angels and prophets who are killed 
by people rather because who don't want to be burdened with the radical ideas that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So when you pray out loud in the elected assembly of politicians in our province to give us this day our daily bread and then you don't give the bread, then don't pray the prayer. It's as simple as that. Second, New Brunswick is not just a province of Christians. I overheard someone talking about our basement sale yesterday here at the church where I think over $1,300 was raised about many of the people who came and bought stuff were immigrants. What about their beliefs? How is their faith represented in our provincial legislature? Where are the Muslim prayers? Where are the Jewish prayers and the Hindu prayers? What about our atheist friends and family who would rather not hear any of that at all? Why not just have a moment of silence and let people think what they think and then get on with the business of governing this province? One of the things that I'm grateful for here is the presence of the caring kitchen and feeding people. After church, when you go down to the basement sale and collect some things, if you haven't before, take a look at the counters and the refrigerators and the storerooms for food and see how holiness happens. Right now it's filled with items for the sale, but all, long, all week long people sit there and they eat in a space where they can have peace and dignity. To me, it's the glory of God at work and we need to protect it. I think there's a few things happening downtown that can be explained while we do have holy, homeless people. We do have to give us this day our daily bread and mean it. We do have people without work who are homeless. We have people who come from work and park their car and get lunch. They come to eat and take food with them to find a place, whether it's a shelter or subsidized housing, and find a way to exist for another day. It's a lot of hard work to be poor. God blesses them just as much as God blesses you or I, because he is holy. God is different, as Psalm 99 wants us to remember. And then there's a whole other segment of the downtown population who are addicted, but they need to eat too. But with the group, there's another level of concern that they may harm themselves or us. We do what we can to protect them and defend them, yes, but it sometimes means creating boundaries that we have to protect ourselves from them. You may not know this, but during church last week, there was a woman in distress just outside this door, and while we were singing hymns, she was naked outside of our walls, laying on the concrete among her possessions. And fortunately for her, a few good Christians here at the church recognized her distress and went and called people who could help. She wasn't alone. She was safe from predators, and she was taken to a place of care. One of our choir members, who happens to be the chair of our property committee, along with our church treasurer, saw to her dignity to me. That is the glory of God at work. Just as, we do right, just as what we do right now is the glory of God at work. And I know you feel this too sometimes, but I just need a place to hide out for a bit from the world. So I come here and find you. I need a place to get away from the horribleness around me. And that's just what Moses does. Even though God is talking directly to Moses, somehow Moses could use a little more encouragement than the actual voice of God. It's not enough for Moses to actually talk directly to God. Moses wants to see God. He just doesn't want to hear the song. He wants to see the singer. And God being God says, okay, but just for a moment. The other day while I was brushing my teeth, my son asked me what my favorite part of church was. <laughs> That's part of my life, those questions at that time. And I suspect your kids don't ask that, so I'll take a few moments to say what I said to him after I thought about it, toothbrush in hand. At first I told him I didn't think I had a favorite part of church. But as I thought about it, I did have something I could tell. Years ago, a woman and her, her husband attended church here, and they were also here when our son was born, and they remembered that in the beginning he wasn't okay, that he was taken to the NICU, and we didn't have any answers. And I remembered how quiet it was there, and if ever there was a place where prayers have a priority, it's there. Sometime later, I went to visit her in a nursing home after she'd had a massive stroke that left her in a chair with no mobility or speech. And she was trying to communicate with me when I saw a page close by that had the alphabet and a wooden instrument with a circle to hold it. So I put it on her table on her wheelchair and I paid attention to what she had spelled out and what she was trying to say and she wrote out letter by letter, how is your boy? So a few months later I took the kids visiting, <laughs> visiting with me at Christmas time in nursing homes and um, she was there with her children and her grandchildren and 
Allie had her ukulele and they, the kids sang and she cried and when she died the family said that she was so grateful for that moment. So I said to my son, that's my favorite thing about church. Because God is holy. Because God is real. And we know God through worship. But we also know God when we set apart sacred moments that are special. That we hold close to us. So when I think of Israel and Gaza, with all the babies and the stories that we hear of the cruelty there, or I think of the baby or a family in our church with a baby in ICU, or a family who suddenly loses the one that they love, their baby, I wish that I could just see God for a moment and have a talk like Moses and ask God, show me your glory. What's this all about? In the story from Exodus, God went by so fast that Moses only saw God's back because as God had said, no one sees my face and lives. So God did this little thing, put Moses in a spot on the side of the mountain and covered Moses' face with his hand as he passed by. And maybe today we worship the God of the glimpse. We only get little glimpses of the sacred. A few years ago when the pandemic began, I encountered the word doom scrolling, and it's what we all did for the latest bad news. Deb Dana, a clinical social worker who specializes in complex trauma in her 2018 book, coined the phrase glimmers. So she said this, the opposite of triggers are glimmers, and they are micro moments of joy. They are the sacred. They are the joy that invoke inner calm. They have a positive effect on our mental health. They are micro moments causing mood shifts. They send cues of safety to our nervous system, and our body responds with positive energy. And they allow us to feel the hope that we need when we're lost. They help increase our well-being. Another glimmer moment as the church can that the church can reflect on is that God is holy. And so are you. Amen.
Thank you to the choir. Let us pray. Disturb us, O God, and compel us to be change makers in this world. We give thanks that we are able to stand up for peace and to pray for others. We pray today for our world at war. We pray for humanitarian aid, even though it is not enough as it trickles through. We pray for an end to violence, an end to hostilities. We pray for countries in our world who are in pain. We pray today for our country of Canada. We give thanks for its peaceful origins, for its role in our world to be peacekeepers. And we give thanks for all who do that work. And we pray today for our city, that peace can be found here too. We give thanks that we live in a vibrant place filled with artists and musicians. For those in our city who care for others, for those who teach our children. We give thanks for so many things in this life, O oh God. And for this brief moment, we lift a few of them up to you now. We pray for the brokenhearted and for the broken. May we be the presence of Christ to them as we are able. And help us, O oh God, to be present to each other as we give thanks for this church of your people, for those who wander in off the street to find a home here, for those who just visit just to see what it's all about, for those who watch online and share and worship that way, that we all feel included and welcomed. We give thanks for Mel and the choir, for the music they're making together. We give thanks for all of the visits and the cards and the flowers that go out from this congregation each and every month, for all the phone calls that are made to show that we care and that people haven't been forgotten. We pray for those in hospital and receiving care there. We pray for those who are sick at home. We pray for those who are isolated and we pray for ourselves. Hear us, O God, as we continue to pray in the name of the one who taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for and ever and ever. Amen. You're welcome to join us after the service in the hall for coffee and tea. And if not, I'll be shaking hands at that door if you want to say hello. Hymn number 694.
I've never sung that hymn before, but I'm guessing that James Lowell back in 1845 didn't have a cup of coffee that morning. <laughs> May truth gentle your heart. May truth find itself in your speech. May truth guide your actions and attitudes. May truth release you to be fully you. May truth compel you to greater love and compassion. And may truth fortify you as you go into the world as God's agent of healing and hope. Live in truth. Go in peace. Be love. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.